Hi everyone. Today we're going to be modeling a basic worm gear set which you can use to transmit power between non-intersecting shafts and which allow you to achieve a very high gear reduction ratio in a very compact space. Now I'd like to start off with modeling the worm and I'd like to think of the worm here as a rack that has been revolved around an axis. So if I revolve this rack profile around this axis and make a new body, I get something that kind of looks like a worm. The only difference is that instead of these teeth going around in circles, I need these teeth to go around in helices. Just like with the racks, we can make our worm parametric. So I've already set up the parameters. So we're going to use a module of two millimeters. The length I'm defining in terms of how many teeth I want it to be tall, so that it'll be 10 teeth tall. Pressure angle of 20 degrees, I want a worm with four starts, and I want the diameter of the worm to be 40 millimeters. The first thing I want to do is model the helix, but before I begin, I'll create a new component and call it worm. And then I'll go into the surface tools and create a new sketch on this vertical plane here. I hit L for line and I'll draw out a horizontal line that will have a length of the diameter of the worm divided by two. And then we'll draw out a vertical line that will be the length of length, the length in teeth, times the module, times pi. So that's, again, a lot like a rack. That's the only things we need in the sketch. So we can just finish the sketch, and then we'll sweep. And then it's going to be this profile along this path here. And now we need to enter a twist angle. And that twist angle is going to be the length, so how many teeth we want to advance, divided by the number of starts, and that entire thing multiplied by 360 degrees. So right now we want to advance 10 teeth, and we want to have four starts. So what you see now is that this thing over here makes two and a half turns. And so if we have four of these put together, then we will have 10 turns in total. So click OK on this, and that gives us this surface body. Um, and it's not really this body per se that we want. The only thing that we really want here is this helical edge on the outside. The next thing I want to do is draw out the tooth profile. So I'll go back into the solid workbench and create a sketch on this vertical plane here. And I'll project the edge of the helix into my sketch because I want the tooth profile to be centered on this end point here. So hit L for line and just draw out a little trapezoid. And then I'll make this angle equal to 90 minus the pressure angle. And then I'll ensure that both sides of the trapezoid are equal. I'll add a vertical line that will be the pitch line. And that line will be centered on the end point of the helix. Next, the addendum is going to be one time the module. And the dedendum is usually one and a quarter times the module, but here I'll take one and a half times the module because I want it to fully join up to the central cylinder that we'll add in a minute. The last thing we need to do is fix the length of this thing, which is going to be pi times the module divided by two. Now we can finish the sketch and there we have the tooth profile. We can now sweep this tooth, so under create, we go to sweep, and then the type here will be a path plus a guide rail. The profile is of course going to be the tooth profile, and then make sure that you have change selection disabled. The path is going to be this vertical line here, and the guide rail will be this outer helix here, and that gives us a single start for our worm gear. So click OK. Then we can go into the worm gear component and hide the surface body. We don't need it anymore. And then we'll do a circular pattern of type bodies. This body around this central axis. And then we want number of starts here. So now I have four bodies, one body for each start. And the final thing I'll do is create a sketch on the horizontal plane here. C for circle. And then this will be the diameter minus two and a half times the module. 
So that's just the inner diameter, generally speaking, of a gear. Finish sketch, E for extrude. Then we are going to go two sides. And then in one direction, we will go the length measured again in teeth plus one. And that times the module times pi. So that ensures that we end up a little bit above where the teeth end. And then in the other direction, we will just do the module times pi. And then the operation will be join. And when we click OK, we see that all of the bodies are now merged into a single body. And with that, our worm gear is basically complete. Just like the rack that we've made before, this worm gear works rather well with parameters. So if I go into the parameters and, for example, change the module to three millimeters, we see that we get a gear with larger teeth. And I can, for example, change the length to be only five teeth long. And I can change the pressure angle to 25 degrees. And then we see the tooth profile change slightly. Unfortunately, the same is not true for the wheels. Those won't really work with parameters, unfortunately. So let me change this back to the original values. And before we go on to modeling the wheel, I'd first like to set up some helper components to help us with the joints in a moment. So I'll activate the root component and create a new component that I will call worm shaft. And then I'll create a sketch on this horizontal plane here, C for circle, and then let's do 10 millimeters. The dimensions here don't really matter. E for extrude, about that far up. And then I will do an as-built joint. So I'll joint the worm to this helper shaft. And that will be a revolute joint, and I'll put the origin of the joint down here. And click OK. And then I'll take this worm shaft, right-click, ground it. And the next thing we need is another new component, which we will call the wheel shaft. And for that, we'll create a sketch on this vertical plane here. So let me find the front. C for circle. And then again, 10 millimeters, it doesn't really matter. And then the horizontal distance from the center of the worm to the center of the wheel is going to be the diameter of the worm divided by two plus the pitch radius of the wheel that we're about to make. So that's going to be the number of teeth, which is going to be 16 in this case, times the module. And then because we want the radius, it's divided by two. So that gives us 36 millimeters here. And then for the vertical distance, I'm going to select um, the length of the, the worm divided by two. And that then needs to be multiplied by the module times pi. And that will put the shaft halfway up the height of the worm. So finish the sketch, E for extrude. And then we are going for symmetric with a whole length of 20 millimeters. Click OK. And then finally, also this other helper shaft, right click ground. Now, the wheel in this case is just a helical gear. So we just do the same thing that we did in video three. So under scripts and add-ins, we go to the spur gear. And then we want a module two gear with 16 teeth. We're going to select zero backlash because we want to see how well our modeling method works. And uh, we'll set the gear thickness to 20 millimeters, though it doesn't really matter, and we want no hole. So click OK on this. And then we go in here and pick up this spur gear and drag it out to the side for a minute. And then we activate this gear, and then we create a sketch on one of these vertical planes. We capture the position because we don't want the gear to fly back to where it came from. And then as before in video three, P for project, project that in. And then from the middle, we will go up by 20 millimeters. Finish the sketch and then create sweep. In this case, it's just going to be a single path sweep, just a simple version. So that profile along this path. And then we need to enter a twist angle to turn this into a helical gear. So let's go do some math to figure out what this twist angle should be. 
Just like in video 3, the easiest way to think about this is to take a gear like this, cut it open, and then lay it flat. And in the case of a worm gear, what we get then is that we have a single tooth during a single rotation. And in that single rotation, it will cover a horizontal distance here of the diameter times pi. That's simply the circumference of a circle. And the vertical distance that is covered is the module times the number of starts times pi. And so if we want to know this helix angle here of this worm gear, then we take the arc tangent of the opposite divided by the adjacent, and the pi's here just cancel out. And then we get the arc tangent of 8 over 40, the arc tangent of a fifth, that's equal to 11.31 degrees. That is the helix angle here, but that is not the angle that we need to enter into Fusion 360. From video 3, we remember that the angle we need to enter is this formula over here. And what we get then is just 360 times 20 millimeters, that's the height that we had for the sweep, times a fifth, because the tangent of the arc tangent of a fifth is a fifth. And then the module times the number of teeth times pi, that's just this bit over here. And what we get is an angle of 14.324 degrees. So that is what we have to enter into the sweep command in Fusion 360. So here we enter a twist angle of 14.324 degrees. And then under operation, we will select new body. Then we can go into the component and remove the old spur gear body. We no longer need that. And then I'll activate the root component and create a joint between this wheel and this helper shaft over here. So I'll flip that to the other side. This has to be a revolute joint, of course. And then the angle isn't quite right yet. So the first thing I'll do is rotate it by a half tooth. So to do that, I do 360 degrees divided by the number of teeth times two. And the issue now is that the front face of the gear is correctly aligned with the worm. But what we want is that the center line of the wheel is correctly aligned with the worm. So to do that, I'm going to subtract the twist angle that we entered before, divide it by two, and that ensures now that the center line of the wheel is correctly aligned. So click OK on this. And then the final thing we'll do is create a motion link between the worm here and the wheel over there. And then if the worm rotates once, that means that it advances four teeth so in that case, the wheel has to rotate 4 divided by 16 times. And that looks pretty good. So this is basically a completed worm gear set. The final thing I want to do here is inspect how well the meshing works. So the first thing I'll do is a section analysis on the central vertical plane. And then when we look at this, what we have here is essentially a rack and pinion. So if you look all the way down here, we can actually see that there is a little bit of space opened up here. And if we look over here, we see a little bit of interference between both of the gears. And indeed, if we disable the analysis and then we do a interference analysis, select both of these and press compute, we see these same interferences show up again. And they're both quite minor, but they are there. And so I think the, what the issue here is, is that we can only put so many decimals in both the twist command for the helical gear, as well as the angle offset that we put in the joint here. And that's where these interferences, I think, are coming from. When it comes to 3D printing these gears, I expect you won't have any trouble with the wheel because that's just a helical gear with a relatively shallow helix angle. But printing the worm can be quite difficult because the underside of the teeth form a relatively steep overhang that's quite difficult to print with a good surface quality. So a few pointers there is first of all, select a relatively large pressure angle because that makes the overhang a little less steep and that makes it easier to print. Second, use a relatively low layer height. Uh, I recommend 0.1 millimeters or something even a little lower. And finally, just ensure that you have good print cooling to get as little drooping here as possible. 
There are also a few pieces of theory that I wish to cover today. First of all, I want to warn you that worm gear sets are relatively inefficient. Because as these two gears move in mesh like this, the teeth of the wheel are moving in this direction, while the teeth of the worm are moving in this direction. And so rather than rolling contact like you get in a spur gear set, we get a lot of sliding contact in this case, and that creates a lot of friction and wear. And it also creates a lot of heat. So good lubrication is essential for a worm gear set. I also want to note that this friction and this inefficiency increases as the angle of this worm gear becomes shallower. The next thing is that worm gear setups can be non-back drivable or self-locking. So if I take these two gears and I start to rotate the worm, then the wheel will start to rotate. But if instead I try to rotate the wheel, then the worm won't budge. Now this occurs more often if the helix angle is shallower and that's the less efficient and usually higher reduction setups. And it also depends a lot on the material choice, the coefficient of friction and any lubrication that you have applied. I also want to point out that even though a mechanism might be self-locked like this, external vibrations might cause it to move anyway. So if you think of sugar, salt, chocolate sprinkles, something like that, if you shake the container around, you will see that they start to move. And the same is true in this case. External vibrations can cause this to move. So you cannot use this trick for safety critical applications. The next thing I want to talk about is wear. So if I start rotating these two gears together, if I rotate the worm four times, then the wheel will have advanced four starts times four turns is 16 teeth, which means it rotates once. So in that case, every tooth of the worm has seen four contacts, while every tooth of the wheel has seen only one. So roughly speaking, the worm is getting worn down four times quicker than the wheel, and wear is a significant problem for worm gear sets. So to mitigate this, one common method is to use a harder material for the wheel than for the worm. And a common combination here is to use something like steel for the worm and bronze or cast iron for the wheel. The final thing I want to point out is that so far I've regarded these sets mostly as a modified rack and pinion, but you can also regard them as a very extreme case of crossed helical gears. In that case, you do have to ensure that the normal modules and normal pressure angles match. And so far, we've been working completely within the transverse system. I'll leave a link to a video from Steel Stone down below, where he creates a fully parametric gear set that can be both a regular spur gear set, a helical gear set, and a worm gear set, all in the same model, just depending on what parameters you select. That's all I have for you today. I'm currently researching how to make throated worm wheels and how to make spiral bevel gears, so stay tuned for that. Don't forget to do all the algorithm thingies down below. Thanks for watching and have a good night.